Today, we'll be dealing with yet another sci-fi animated portal. I've already created three other variations of something very similar. However, this tutorial is going to be much simpler than the previous three. However, less complex, but we'll add in a few tricks during the compositing stage, which will definitely make this seem more complex. So with that, let's actually learn how to create this particular portal. In our default scene, we can go ahead and tap X to delete our default cube and then press Shift A and just search for a mesh circle. Now this circle does not have to be too high resolution, so we'll keep it at the default, but we'll tap our X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Now we'll scale it up by maybe two units to just make it a little larger. Now we'll press tab to go into edit mode and then we'll tap F to fix fill it in. Now we'll go back to object mode and we can then start playing around with the actual material. To do that, we'll switch our viewport shading to render. We'll select the default light and tap X to delete it. And we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then switch this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Now with this object selected, we can go to the material properties and we could create a new material, or we can use the default material since we're not using that for anything else. We'll rename this to portal and we'll go ahead and go down to the actual blend modes and change this from opaque to alpha blend. Similarly, you can change the shadow mode to none and that should be good enough to start playing around with the material. Now in your shader editor, you should be able to see your nodes and we'll zoom in, select the principled PSDF and tap X to delete it. Now we need two different nodes. One is going to be an emission and the other is going to be a transparent PSDF. So let's just press shift A and search for both of them. And to mix these together, we're going to use a mix shader. Now we'll go ahead and plug this emission into the top socket and the transparent into the bottom and the output can go into the material output just like that. Now we're actually going to control which areas are emissive and which areas are transparent using this factor and another texture. The texture that we're going to use this time is going to be a wave texture. In previous tutorials, we have used gradient textures, we've used noise textures, but for today, we'll just use this wave texture. Now the wave is clearly going up and down. That's not what we want. So we'll start off by changing this from bands to rings, and then we can change this from the X axis to the Z axis, and that should work. However, we could also change this from the Z to spherical, and you should get the exact same sort of distribution. The next issue that we're facing is that the center seems to be at this edge, but we need it to be at the center of the object. That's very simple to do. All we do is select it and press Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now we'll switch from generated to object and by doing just that we'll get this centralized exactly as we want it. Now there are so many rings we don't actually want this many we just want one or two so we're gonna go ahead and just reduce this scale until we get a size that we want. So I think something like this is good enough however we want it such that the outsides are actually filled with the material and the center is transparent. So to invert this, we could just switch over the shaders, but I'm going to actually use a color ramp so that we get some more control as well. So let's plug that in and just switch these over just like that. And now you can see we have the center as transparent and the outsides as filled. Let's just bring that back and that might look good, but I actually want to bring this in quite a bit and change this from linear to ease. Now that looks great. Let's go ahead and start playing around with the wave textures itself. To make it more portly, we're gonna go ahead and just increase the distortion quite a bit. And along with that, we'll increase the detail and the detail scale. We can also play around with the detail roughness and that will give us the actual portal that we want. Let's actually just reduce the distortion to maybe something like two. And now you can see the sort of portal effect that we have right at the center. Now, Actually, increasing this detail scale by itself could be a good portal animation. However, that would work for short animations and not for loops, because as you see, when you start increasing the detail scale, eventually it just gets smaller and smaller and you can't loop it back. But for now, I'm going to keep the detail scale at something like 20 and I'll keep the detail roughness at something like 0.8. Now that I have that created as well, I can go ahead and make this actually curl in so that it looks like it's more rotated. For that, we can play around with this rotation and you see rotating it about the Z gives us the rotation that we want. However, we want it such that the inner areas are rotated the least and the outer areas are rotated the most. Now we can do that by using another gradient texture that goes from the center. So let's just search for the gradient texture and again, press control T to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now you don't actually need this texture coordinate node because we already have one over here. So we can just use the same object and plug that in over here. Next, if we actually control 
hold shift click it to preview the gradient texture, you can see we have a gradient that goes from left to right. Since we want it to go from the center outward, we have to change this from linear to spherical and that way we get it exactly as we want where the innermost region is white so it's going to rotate the most and the outermost regions are black so it's not going to rotate as much. We can just plug this into the Z socket of the rotation but we don't have access to the Z socket. To get access we're going to search for a combined XYZ node and that way we can just use the Z socket over here. So let's plug this into the Z and plug this vector into the rotation and then control shift click the mix shader to actually see what we have till now. Now we can see that yes we are getting a little bit of the swirling but we want to increase the amount of swirl. To do that we can just use a math node so let's press shift a search for a math node plug that in over here and instead of add we're going to switch this to multiply and by multiplying it by a larger value we can get more and more twists. Now you can use this to create all sorts of textures including galaxies, nebulae and things like that but we're just going to keep this multiplication at something low like 3 and that should be good enough. The next thing that we have to do is get this to continuously rotate and we can do that by using another math node but this time instead of multiply it's going to be an addition. So let's switch this from multiply to add and now just by playing around with this add value you can actually get it to rotate. Now we know that it's going to rotate once every 360 degrees but since we're plugging it in from the outside it's actually going to be in radians. So 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. So let's go ahead and actually start off with that animation and for that we'll go ahead and set our animation defaults. We'll switch our resolution to 200% and we'll change the frame rate to 60 frames per second. Then we'll change the end frame to something like maybe 1200 so that we get a 20 second long animation and it's going to be looping. Our output folder can be wherever we want it to be. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. The encoding, I'm going to change the container to MPEG4 with an output quality of Perceptree lossless. Then back on frame 0, we'll go ahead and change this value down to 0 and we'll tap I and then on frame 1200, we'll go ahead and change this value to 2 star pi or TAU which is also equal to 2 pi. Then we'll just tap I while hovering over it to add in a keyframe. Now the interpolation is going to be by default Bezier. So let's select both of these, press T and choose linear so that we get a smooth loop as this rotates around. Now that looks great but I still want there to be some more motion because this looks like a static image that's being rotated around. To get that motion we're gonna actually move this on the Z axis as well. Now you can see if we change the location on the Z it's acting more like an offset for the wave texture which is not what we want. So we can play around with maybe the Y axis and that also is a very cool effect and I actually see a yin yang symbol which intrigues me to create something like this later on but for the time being that isn't exactly what I want. So we have to figure out what exactly we're supposed to be keyframing. Now one possible reason that this could be happening is because this gradient is currently a spherical gradient. So instead of having it as spherical in the wave texture we can change this to just the Z which is the local Z or in our case the Y and now by playing around with the Z it actually looks like it's moving across another dimension and that is exactly the type of animation that we wanted. So let's go ahead and keyframe this and the way we're going to do that is on frame 0 we'll keep it at a value of 0 and we'll just hover over it and tap I. Then on frame 1200 we'll go ahead and change this value to the exact same value which means no motion and just tap I. Then in the middle that is around frame 600 we can go ahead and give it some high value. Maybe we'll go with a value of 5 and then we'll just hover over it and tap I. Now again select it tap T and choose linear and that way we should get some linear motion as the entire thing rotates about as well. So that looks really cool and it definitely looks a lot more like a sci-fi portal. And once we have that set up we can actually go ahead and give it whatever color it's supposed to get. So in my case I'm actually going to make this reddish so let's just bring it down like that and increase the strength all the way up to something like 5 or 10. Now to get it to look even better we can go to our render properties switch on bloom as well as screen space reflection and then go down to color management and change the view transform from filmic to AGX. Now in case you want this area to be even more clumsy you can always go around playing around with these values to get variations till you're happy with what you have. For now I'm gonna go ahead and create some sort of an edge to this particular object and to do that we'll just press shift a and search for a curved circle and we'll rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Now we can scale it up till it's roughly the size of the first circle and right now this curve is also fairly jagged. To make it much smoother we can go down to the curve properties and change the resolution all the way up to 64 so that it becomes nice and smooth. Then we'll go to the geometry and we'll just expand the bevel by increasing the depth and that gives it this nice torus shape which is exactly what we were looking for. You can make this as thick or thin as you want 
want, but I'll leave it at maybe a value of 0.1 for now. The next thing that we need is a material for this object. So let's go to the material properties and now we'll press this plus button to create a new material. This one's just going to be completely metallic with a fairly low roughness. Maybe we'll go with a value of 0.2 and that should be good enough to get some slight reflections here and there, but those aren't really the reflections that we're looking for. To create much better reflections, we need some more objects to allow for reflections. For that, we'll press Shift A and just search for a mesh cube and we'll scale it up till it's roughly bigger than our actual portal. Then we'll press Tab to go into edit mode and we'll go to our face select mode by pressing this button up here and then selecting this front face and then tapping X and just deleting that face. Now we can go back to object mode and scale this up just a little bit more and that should be good enough. The next thing that we need is some sort of a light present in here. So let's press Shift A and search for a light and we'll just choose a point light and we'll press GY to bring it back by a little bit. Then we'll go ahead and change the color to maybe a slightly reddish color again and we'll just increase the power until we get a nice little rim right over there. To get this rim to be a little more diluted we can just increase the radius and I think that looks great. Now that we have that created we can go ahead and set up our camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear its location, Alt R to clear its rotation followed by RX 90 to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll press 0 to go into the camera view and we'll press GY to just bring it back till we actually get everything covered. Another thing that you can do is keep it fairly close and then just reduce the focal length from 50 millimeters to something as low as 18 millimeters to actually get everything to fit in just like that. Once you have all of that created, you can actually play around with the dimensions because the reflections change accordingly. It's really up to you and what you think will suit your scene best. However, in my camera properties, I'm going to actually go down to the viewport display, increase pass par 2 all the way to 1 so that I don't see anything outside my camera view. Then with my cube selected, I'll go ahead and give it another new material which is also going to be very very reflective but I'll reduce the roughness from 0.5 down to something like 0.2 or maybe I'll increase it to 0.3 and I'll just play around with it till I get something that I think suits the scene, maybe a value of 0.4. Along with that, it's actually far too bright right now. So I'll go ahead and just bring it down a bit. But to bring it down even more, I'm actually going to go to my world properties and change this all the way down to a complete black. Now that I have this setup, I can go ahead and just fine tune it till I get the exact look that I'm going for. But once I'm happy with the way everything looks, I can go ahead and start off with the compositing. For the compositing, I'm going to go ahead and just expand this menu over here and choose the compositor to camera as well so that we can actually see the changes that we make. Now we'll switch this bottom window from our shader editor to our compositor and that way we can use the actual nodes to composite. For that we have to check use nodes and now we can bring this over to the side and just add in one simple node which is going to be the glare node. Now this is one of my most favorite compositing nodes because it just adds quite a lot very very easily. We're going to switch from streaks to ghosts and that's actually all you have to do. You can play around with the mix. You can see a mix of zero has just our image with no compositing and a mix of one will show exactly what was composited onto the image. However, we're going to keep this mix at a value of something very less. Let's go with maybe minus 0.5 and that should be all the compositing that we need to create something really stunning. The last thing that we could do before rendering could be going down to our render properties and just changing this look from none to maybe punchy or even high contrast or things like that to just get something that might suit your looks a little bit more. But essentially, once you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and press render animation. If you want this particular file, you can get it on my Patreon store or you can subscribe to my monthly tiers where you'll get all of the files that are created throughout the month. I know I hadn't been posting recently in the past few days, but from now on, I will be posting once every day. So definitely look out for new videos every single day. I have quite a lot planned out and I can't wait to share them with you. So until my next video comes out, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to check out the previous sci-fi portal animations that I had created and while we're at it, all other videos that are present on my channel. Keep creating and as always, stay creative.